Hello, my name is John F. Dean and I'm talking to you from my home in Dublin. Last year we spent quite a lot of the year and earlier this year in our home down in Leitrim, right in the middle of the countryside, uh, where we had great peace and quiet. Uh, we come and go a little bit nowadays between Leitrim and Dublin. However, I was born on Achill Island, which is a small island off the west coast of Ireland, off County Mayo. And I was born there and reared there. And it is a most beautiful and rugged place, even though I'm probably slightly biased in its favour. Um, we had great freedom growing up there, running around, cycling, swimming, climbing cliffs, all of that. And the freedom and the awareness of the physical world around me really made my youth a very, very happy place. The influence and the fascination of islands has stayed with me all my life. Um, now I live in Dublin most of the time, but um, I have written in this new collection of poems, Naming of the Bones, I have written about travels to several islands, uh, including Iona, Lindisfarne, Achill Island, of course, then on through Crete and Patmos. And I have been trying to discover the essence of Ireland, if you like. Um, having been born there on an island, the notion of island and isolation has always fascinated me. I was brought up as a Roman Catholic with a very strict outlook on life, where everything was an effort to get through the Valley of Tears and to get to heaven. And to get there, we had commandments and rules of the church and so on. And if we stuck to these faithfully, we would hit heaven eventually. This is what I was brought up with. And it has fascinated me all my life as I have tried to make sense and to grow into something perhaps more reasonable than all of that. Um, I taught for a number of years. I was very lucky to be able to give that up and uh, find how best I could explore um, the things that I was interested in. In about 1978-79, I founded the National Poetry Society in Ireland, Poetry Ireland, along with its review, the Poetry Ireland Review. And um, Ireland has given me the opportunity to help develop the whole notion of poetry in Ireland, its dissemination, and perhaps even its widening from an isolated position into an awareness of poetry from America, or from Europe, from all over the world. And I have been very lucky to be able to do that. A Carcanet Press took me on in around 2000, and they began with the selected poems. And since then, I have published with them, I think, around seven collections of poetry. And this one is the latest, Naming of the Bones. And um, I am very grateful to Carcanet for their patience and their uh, faithfulness to what I have been doing. I always envied the beautiful books that Carcanet brought out. Uh, books by, for instance, Ivan Boland, uh, Thomas Kinsella. And uh, these always are beautifully produced and uh, I have been very, very pleased with them. I go back to Achill occasionally, kind of quick Viking-like raids back to my roots to um, revive my notions of what the island is and how it's developing and how it's changing. So I've been fascinated by, number one, I suppose, by the sea. Number two, by faith, uh, its restrictions, but also its great, greater possibilities. And I have been working, I hope, uh, towards defining the wider possibilities of faith, of belief in some form of God. Um, I try to write pretty regularly. 
it's not essential, I think, that you sit down for half an hour every day and work on poems. I don't think it certainly doesn't work like that for me. But I have notebooks of various kinds, good old school book, copy books, in which I keep notes and badly written efforts at poems. I have endless number of these down the years. So the writing starts there and it's written out by pen. And the pleasure gets from some of that work coming together, some of the little bits and pieces that are there coming together to form a poem. And then transferring that onto a laptop or a computer where the work uh, can be much more pleasurable. Uh, growing up as a Roman Catholic, uh, I felt myself to be sort of impermeable to outside influences. Uh, we had all of these strictures and rules and regulations. And my view of the world for many, many years uh, was therefore limited and restricted. And I found out afterwards that um, the poetry was like that too. It was uh, limited and restricted. Um, so I have found that the Western Christian churches have been inimical to the physical world, that we are supposed to keep our eyes down and to make our way cautiously, like pilgrims progress through uh, temptations of earth and make our way cautiously into heaven. Um, eventually I began to realize because I loved the world so much. I loved Ackle Island and its physical beauty, uh, its challenges, its uh, dangers even. Um, and then I discovered luckily the work of one Teilhard de Chardin. He was a Jesuit priest and he developed the whole notion of evolution, which in my very young days was a bad word in in the Catholic Church because there was supposed to be no change. Everything was fixed and firm uh, from the very first, from the ongoing of life. Now I realize that uh, stasis of not moving forward is in fact the great danger and that institutions uh, become hidebound, become rocks really in one's path. So I have been trying to move out from an island perspective, if you like, into a cosmic view of the world. And that's, that's a big notion perhaps, but one does that slowly. Um, to do, to write well, I do now believe, you stop talking to the world and you start listening to the world outside. So experience, um, even prayer, if you like, in whatever form that takes, should be partly listening rather than trying to impose one's own view on things. Uh, music and poetry, if the poems and if the music, if they're all good, um, do not impose anything. They present what the human spirit uh, offers. And I have been trying to open myself to the spirit, if you like, for a long time. And to do that in poetry uh, is an imaginative experience. You just got to let the imagination loose. Something also that the uh, strict Catholic upbringing uh, did not allow, or did certainly did not encourage. Um, so my poems for too long were too formal, too hidebound, and too impermeable to the outside. I came across a wonderful poet, again, by sheer luck, I think, uh, Trans Thomas Tranströmer, Swedish poet, uh, whose work I read in translation, of course, at the beginning. But uh, when I got really excited by it, uh, I began to try and translate for myself. And this is one of the poems that really, it's so simple, so easy, so direct, so accurate, and yet so open to the actual physical world 
that it really uh, began to push me on a new path. It's a poem simply called From March 79. The title is only a, a date. It doesn't really make much difference. Tired of all who come with words. Words, but no language. I went to the snow-covered island. The wild does not have words. The unwritten pages spread themselves out in all directions. I come across the marks of roe deer's hooves in the snow. Language, but no words. For me, that is uh, the world speaking to us rather than us speaking to the world. So Thomas Transtumer became for me a huge inspiration. I got to know him quite well and he was just a wonderful man as well as uh, I think a wonderful poet. Other great influences and great uh, loves of their poetry for me were who I call uh, the Triple H. These are the heavyweight wrestlers for God or for poetry. George Herbert, Gerard Manley Hopkins and Seamus Heaney. Um, I followed their work as deeply as I possibly could and really loved the way that Herbert and Hopkins obviously uh, touched on an accepted faith, an already accepted faith, and how Seamus Heaney worked to rediscover uh, some form of faith uh, when he lost the Roman Catholic faith. So for me, these three have been really very important. They came up with uh, delightful lyrics and uh, for many years I have been just writing individual pieces, um, sort of if you like uh, little epiphanies, um, small Eucharists. And I wondered how can we actually put more of these together to form a continuum, a sort of uh, world communion that uh, a gathering of poems will in fact not be just a gathering of individual pieces but uh, a longer, more developing and more uh, deeper looking piece of work. I discovered another great poet whom I love very much, Galway Canal, who was doing precisely that and did it in a particularly in a book called The Book of Nightmares, which is a book length uh, sequence of poems. And uh, this also excited me and showed how perhaps you can take various themes, develop them, and see how they are related to each other and uh, try and find a continuum through all of these. Um, so I began to work towards the sequence, the longer uh, sequence of poems. There is Galway Canal. There is, of course, the four quartets of T.S. Eliot, which I suppose is the supreme um, work of that kind that really stretches far and wide and goes deeper and deeper all the time and still has a complete unity through it. Um, individual poets uh, nowadays that excite me um, are um, Thomas Kinsella, who is uh, very powerful and whose work has developed from collection to collection to collection down through the years. And some, that is also something that I admire very much. I'm also very lucky to have a friend uh, called James Harper, whom I regard as one of our best Irish poets at the moment. Uh, his latest book actually also came from Carcanet. It's called The White Silhouette and has uh, a poem called The White Silhouette which is a long and very, very beautiful uh, poem of the kind that, that I respect and admire very, very much indeed. I have always been uh, enamoured of music. 
Uh, my family is fairly musical. I have a professional composer as, as a brother. Um, and my own knowledge of poetry, while not great, uh, it excites me. I came across Olivier Messiaen, and he's, his poetry, his music, while it is quite difficult and challenging, uh, has also moved me very, very much. And I discovered one of his pieces called Seven Visions of Amen. These are two grand pianos, if you like, uh, in dialogue with one another, arguing with one another about amen, about how do you accept everything that is going on in the world around you. And he is a man who was imprisoned during the Second World War. Uh, as as a, He was French, of course, and uh, the Nazis imprisoned him for some time, uh, where he began, I think, this really challenging kind of work. My own new book, uh, Naming of the Bones, has a sequence in it, which I regard as my, my attempt at uh, Galway Canal's Book of Nightmares, that these are my, mine are not nightmares, praise God. Uh, they're much more open than that. Um, so I think that uh, I would like to uh, read maybe the first of these and the final one of these. They are based on Messian's visions of a man, seven visions of a man. And I have seven um, pieces, if you like, of individual lyrics that are joined together. Uh, the first one, follow each, each section follows one of Messian's seven visions. And it begins, obviously, in childhood. Uh, so this would be the vision of creation, the beginning of all things. It's a simple poem about my early life on Ackle Island uh, as a child and how things actually do begin and how one learns to accept the world around one. There is a boy urging a child-sized U.S. Army jeep around a dew-damp Ackle Island yard, pedalling and steering, and the small stones bump the khaki green star-marked plaything. A cockerel sounds loudly as he cock steps along the wall. Battle and stand-off between cockerel and boy being everyday events of moment. Distant, familiar and unfamiliar that child. There where the pine tree grove was bounded by flowering escalonia bushes. Where robin, thrush and blackbird sang. Where the angelus bell tolled over the incarnation. Noon he is in the parlour at the piano, much against his will, battling the scales, the fingering, the sharps, the flats. Tempo, time, time, the music mother calls. On the lacquered lid, the tick-tock tick of the metronome, while the world turns outside and the fuchsia is in bloom. Adagio, cantabile. Softly, softly. From this time out it will be crescendo, allegretto, and yet amen to the music and amen to the universe. From cockerel to humpback whale, from quark to galaxy, amen to the Christ child chortling in the crib, new earth heart of creation, who is, who was, and who is coming to be to sustain harmony of the spheres, amen. Pianissimo. Begin. Uh, that uh, begins the adventure, if you like, the adventure of life and the adventure into poetry. And the ending of all of that uh, long section of the new book, the section which is called Like the Dewfall, because I do think we, we grow through epiphanies, but these come upon us softly without often our noticing it. And uh, so life is often moving forward like the dewfall. 
this is the final piece in the book and in the sequence. And this is part of what I would call, or what Messian calls in his music, a man to the consummation. This is the same person in old age. Day dying in the outer suburbs, a quiet settling, unfussed, relishing alongside the woman he loves, box tea potato pancakes with parsley butter melting over, shrimp in garlic and lemon sizzling on the skillet, a pinot grigio, that honeysuckle flavour, then stands outside in the warm dusk, faint sounds of a distant traffic, scarcely a zephyr breath touching the high ash trees, the soft shudder of a boiler coming to life. Earlier he had walked where Mallard and Waterhen had been busy about their mating rituals, their rushes and flurries across the waters of the canal, stirred by original freshness and urgency. He inhaled luxuriously, knew that the people whom he loved were here, revelling everywhere around and waiting. Night closing in, soon raspberry and rhubarb crumble with a small dollop of cream, a film perhaps on TV, anticipating always the savoury heaviness of sleep. Brittle-hipped now, a little arthritic and taut of hearing, climbing contentedly but cautiously upstairs. Amen, he says. Amen. O Christ, my Christ. Amen. <laughs>